My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Vault of the Void. We're going to be continuing with Daughter of the Void in Impossible, doing the Corruption deck, getting possibly our ninth, wait, tenth, tenth mastery card? Hmm. There's some heat here. There's Battle Plan, which is card neutral, whereas most draw and discard cards are card negative in this game. This one's card neutral. Um... Gives us the ability to capitalize on some of the discard effects we might be able to build in here. The rest of these are Soul Tithe. Soul Spot could easily make its way into the deck. We'll see. We shall see. Hmm. I mean, Null and Void is the obvious. Unless I want to try and leverage some Soul Tithe. But even then, what am I actually accomplishing with it at the moment? Let's take Null. We also have uh, start the fight with the Void with full, uh, full strength and full energy. So, one second here. I'm just going to pull. Music sounds a bit low to me right now. Uh, delay block six at the start of each turn. There's also Void Sponsor with one less fury. And the first two cards played will trigger an additional time. So we should consider that uh, buffs are going to be more powerful. Wow. Hang on. Uh, it has to be souls. So we have a soul collector and a disheveled salesman, which means I have to hit the path from that direction. It's a couple different ways to do that. It feels like almost certainly this ends up being our play, right? Let's have a look at the map rewards. Self-inflicted agony. No, 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 no. I'm not going to want to do that anyway. My house, my rules. This card is wild. Use corruption to play cards at plus one cost. So if I build up 30 corruption, then I can use this to play out 30 mana in a single turn if we considered every card to cost one extra. However, upgrade it. Sorry, it also says corruption lock. Can no longer gain corruption. Expires at the end of the turn, so you can't infinite. Um... However, it also upgrades to have Cycle. For the rest of the turn, draw one whenever you play a card. So if we have a deck that has like a lot of heavy attacks in it, cards that don't necessarily care about the fact that our Corruption is maybe going down over the course of it, we can utilize that quite effectively. I'm interested in trying that out. Uh, actually, as for the rest of these, not super jazzed. I could take Diversion or Soul Block, but it wouldn't be... Super sad if I can see them. Uh, there's no access to slow here, is there? There's a little bit of weak access. The kneecaps. I'll take that as well. What's this one I'm missing out on? Soul block? I don't need soul block. Grace. It's also worth noting that we can see now the fact that these fights have a random potion in them, so we're getting a little bit more information as the rewards on the map. Like that. So there's two different ways to approach this opening, right? There's ba 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 ba, right? So we skip the treasure, but we get an upgrade. Well, I mean, two up. This this like, hang on. That always, no wait, that doesn't always end up on the path. So yeah, we get two upgrades, we get three normal combats, we get a shrine. It's worth noting this shrine is probably going to be more valuable than the treasure in the long run when we get to the very end here for the soul collector and the disheveled salesman. We're going to want enough souls by that point to get a elite artifact, and we're also going to want enough uh, essence by that point to get an elite artifact. That almost certainly leads into the soul collector. Which leads in from that position, right? Because if I take that and then go up, then I can also take that, getting the Dark Idol. So you give us artifacts for our devotion. Probably not going to give you rage there. Really depends on how many souls I have by that point as to whether or not I give you souls. It kind of feels like that has to be the way that we get into that, right? But we go through a merchant in order to do that, which feels a bit weird. Now, it's worth noting, the other variation at the start here is that, right? So we end up with two upgrades, one fight as compared to two upgrades and three normal fights. 
Uh, we visit one location that may have a secret room. It's actually two locations that may have a secret room adjacency to them. No. Can't do that. Oh, there we go. Uh, yes, and then we're marking those back out, right? No, we're not marking those back out. Hang on, let me just fix this path. Right? I think that is the most value dense path that I have access to right now. Okay. Took a little bit of time to get there, but we got there in the end. Uh, now what do we need to do? Right now, actually, probably cut an unleash for a power draw and then put the unleash back. No, we don't need the unleashes in the deck, right? We need, we need fewer unleashes, if anything. Let's put a purple void zone into curse shields. More than happy to do that. And go for a short foot. Okay, so what is it then? We we need to start out defensive and be able to over defend until we generate enough corruption to be able to pivot to offense. It's gonna be a hard time for a little bit here. Hey, early voids kiss makes it a little easier for us. Uh, we can see we've already drawn out a large amount of defense, and we're going to actually probably keep some of that in. Uh, are we going to keep some of that in there? No, we've got a lot of curse shields in there, but we're fine. Um, first cycle, we're going to want to get rid of Unleashed Darknesses, because they're not necessarily going to be super valuable for us for a while. Uh, I could cast that for six damage. Nothing to turn your nose up at. Could cast it for seven, that's even better. No, there's an essence of protection coming out here anyway, so I have to supplement this with further damage in the future anyhow, so we'll go with the original six. Mm -hmm. Single cursed shield, and then six and six, so I can take down the throat cut of this turn, not preventing any any incoming damage, but it does respawn an enemy. Okay. Very likely to draw another defensive card, which we do. I may even end up using par draw this turn. It's Void's Kiss into Cursed Shield and Cursed Shields. I could double purge here, actually. I'm just going to double purge the Corruption as well as the Energy. So 14, so I should be dealing 10 at least with the Unleashed Darknesses. Yes, I'm doing so. Use the power, purge a single. Play two defends, then we can kill a target. Get a Dark Acolyte with the most damage off of the field and fight's clear. We're done. Sold. All right. Take our shore foot and move onwards. Hellmongrel for second poppy Cinderhound. Good. Very glad not to be fighting the Gloom Shroom right now. That Gloom Shroom is. Oh, it's rough for us. This shore foot isn't actually better than a Cursed Shield until I upgrade it. In my deck at the moment, I mean. Okay. Do I really just like hard purge right now? I think one damage doesn't really mean anything. Four damage, leave myself with two energy. Really? Is that actually what we're going to do? Uh, fine. One, two, three. We... Uh, I can purge one of these. I need to increase the cycle of my deck a little bit as well. Well, here's hoping we find one of the Cursed Shields. Let's drop an Unleashed Darkness. Use a Power Draw to try and hit it. Get Spirit Shield, which I guess works. 12. Interesting. 12 incoming. Two Cursed Shields for the next turn for the kill already. Okay, cool. 
I'm hoping they pivot towards aggression this turn. Dang, only one aggressive this turn. That's fine. We'll, we'll still be okay. Um, yikes. Okay, that actually turned out a lot worse than I thought. You can see all of them are really, really, really buffed by this point. So uh, suddenly life's really bad. Uh, and there's a lot of banes in our discard. So I'll take 8 damage this turn and just hope like heck that I get the kill next turn. Um, I mean, there's no reason to play it. Wait, no, 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 that's not an attack. Okay, so the it, it wouldn't have triggered Ignite. Never mind, I should have played that that turn. That's my bad, but we got the kill. Whew. Only 8 damage taken. That could have gotten a lot worse suddenly. Deck manager shows us a another stone we can just pop in the deck right now. Vulnerable suffers 50% more damage. It's Rage that applies it specifically to attack cards, so vulnerability still matters to this deck. We'll cut a Unleashed Darkness as a result. Pop another Purple Void Stone into a Cursed Shield. I really want to upgrade some of those Cursed Shields as soon as possible. All right, kneecaps. What good? Are you good? What, what, what are you good for? Keeping my legs up straight. Okay, cool. The uh, I've experienced failure in that degree previously, specifically to relate with the uh, a, a, a lateral tear of the meniscus in my own knee previously. So I, I, I understand the value you propose, kneecaps. And the value that is stolen away when the meniscus flips on the inside of the kneecap is, oh, it was bad time. Uh, play three attacks against the enemy. Honestly, literally here right now, uh, despite the fact that I'm wasting energy on that turn, I just need to get as much corruption as possible. Did you just, what did you just take? Okay, cool. As long as it wasn't a uh, Void's Kiss, because I kind of need those. Can you not like this though, please? I really don't want to have to just block all turn, every turn. So we really don't love this upcoming hand. I don't want to give the enemy one AP if I can avoid it at all. All right, I'm gonna hold. We go to five energy next turn. We probably pivot for attacks. Nineteen as well. Okay, I'm dropping a cursed shields. God, do I actually go full aggressive here? I think I do. I think I need to kill next turn. Thank you, Spirit Shield, for existing. And now we are one within the kill. Great. Nine damage softened over the course of this fight. Could have been worse. I do really want those Cursed Shields upgraded. Just gaining passive corruption whilst utilizing them. Seems good to me. Voidling again. Hey, okay, we got a Void Skits early on. This is going to be a completely different fight. Double Cursed Shield in the opening hand as well. Nice. In fact, I'll even play that one, getting to five energy for the next turn. As well as getting some extra corruption off the back of that play. Uh, Void's kiss into wounds. Hold. Well done on giving yourself frenzy is basically your first action. Bit rude, but yeah, it's fine. Uh, spirit shield. I don't really want Spirit Shield to be my big defend these turns. And in fact, I need to increase my cycle really, really quickly through the end of this deck. 
power draw, unless it's the bottom card of this deck, is never mind. We got crippled. I forgot that we were about to be crippled. Whoopsie doopsie. Uh, fine. Let's just do the damage there. I'm going to hold the Cursed Shield because I don't want to end up in a position where I have 27 incoming damage and no way to deal with it. I'm pivoting aggressive here because I think we are going to have to kill in either a turn or two turns time. Do I hold defense? Yeah, my cripple's going to go off this turn. Nice. Kind of ideal defense right now. Merge and then that's... Rest of the deck is mostly extremely aggressive. I'm going to have no ability to block with 28 upcoming. All right, double purge and go for aggression next turn. I'm looking for four casts of damage. That'll do it. Nice. Okay, having a look at our yellow void stone here. I could easily just pop that in basically anything. Happily put that in a cursed shield. 11 block for one energy. Why not? Those kneecaps look a little relevant at the moment as well. I'm going to pop that in instead of an Unleashed Darkness, because again, we pivot for aggression at a very specific point in time. This Null and Void really makes sense as well in the second cycle. In the first cycle, it doesn't really make that much sense, though. Taking the resources, definitely. Gosh. My house, my rules. How are we going to do damage after My House, My Rules, right? The Unleashed Darknesses are all going to lose their value over the course of playing it. We're Corruption Locked, so playing things like Cursed Shield don't really make sense past that point. We're going to have to find so much, like, so much in that merchant specifically to actually get that to run. Concerns me a little. Let's get back to 5 energy next turn. Oh my god, double boys kiss. I mean, that definitely happens. Cop 1 damage this turn? Ideally, I should try and not. Just for the sake of getting more essence from having perfected the fight, because essence is actually going to matter for us here. Okay. Let's go. Drop an Unleashed Darkness, use Cursed Shield into another Cursed Shield for an Unleashed Darkness to the main line of the incoming damage is 26. So we hold the Spirit Shield and a Cursed Shield for the turn after. That's 11, 11, 17, 28. We'll be totally fine. So get back to 5 energy at the end of this turn. Okay, Cursed into Spirit. And then we definitely have to kill the Midliner. We have no way around that there. 19 incoming, 14. I'm probably not going to kill both of these next turn, which means I drop that. Looking for more defense again for 19 incoming. Huh, we found it. Well, it costs like all of our defenses turn to do. Yeah, this Soul Tithe is really not fitting well into the deck. 17. Definitely drop the Bane, obviously, though. 18. It's not an attack, so it's not going to trigger Ignite. So we have the easy time of throwing that off to the left, because the possibility exists that... Uh, no, now we're fine, actually. Yeah, literally, if we have two attacks in a single hand, we kill the puppy here. <laughs> oh, yes, you can pat the puppy now. Perfect. Officially playable again. God, it really feels like I'm missing something from this deck, and every time I upgrade a defend, it doesn't feel like I'm fixing that problem, does it? Let's 
Let's see, two random weakness cards. Discard to gain a corruption. That's literally just an extra corruption that I gain through the first cycle because I'm discarding it typically. Uh, but I need my corruption gain faster as well, and I don't want to rely on Void's Kisses for it. If we have to rely on something for it, it's got to be Sift if we want to do it early on, which means go back to use this, the Null and Void. But I did the Null and Void build like two times in a row when I did corruption, and I don't want to necessarily do that. Excuse me. Sorry, I've accidentally um, <clears throat> become ultrasonic. Which is the DeviantArt character that I draw, char uh, draw art for. All in MS Paint. Of me, as Sonic, the Hedgehog. Uh, purely depicted by d the Ultra Sonic sounds. Uh, which, which makes it really, really hard to draw, but it also makes it really hard for people to argue with my interpretation. And then they also can't tell that I've drawn them pregnant, because of course I have. Uh, it's not Cursed Shield again, is it? Screw it. It's Unleashed Darkness. I'm going to regret that in like two spaces time. <laughs> and at that point, I'm going to be like, you know what? I should have known better. And then I'm going to lose. And then I'm going to start a new run. And then I'm going to try and learn better. So that's that's the order we're going to be going down. Uh, start of the fight. Lose one energy from your... Uh, sorry. And choose a card from your deck to add to your hand. I mean, look. That would give us Void's Kiss at the moment. I think that kind of matters. Yikes. Yikes at what it looks like the enemy wants to do this turn. 22 incoming damage. Most of our deck is defense at this point. I'm getting past Spirit Shield. Mm -hmm. Let's get to 5 energy for the next. Also got into 17 Corruption, right? So it matters. Yikes! That's 30 incoming. Yeah, without the ability to put weak on this enemy, we're uh, kind of getting styled on right now. I really don't like this. I mean, I can generate 35 block with my whole hand to keep myself perfect here. We finally get kneecaps, but it's at the bottom of the first cycle of the deck. This is not going to work out too well for us, is it? Yeah, without Spirit Shield, it was just not happening this turn. And this is a, a full or reasonably full block. Good lord, speaking of not happening this turn. The same thing I said last turn. Again. 47 incoming. Oh. Yeah, we're too slow. We're too slow. We we lost. <laughs> we deal two, 22 damage with our attacks, but we're eight rounds in, and so the enemy is just not really possible to defend. Our defense will never scale as well as our enemies right now. So I think I need to scale my offense faster as this character. Okay. We lived through that fight. I need to start scaling my offense immediately. Uh, gosh. How do I do that? Cut a Cursed Shield. No, I can't cut a Cursed Shield for an Unleashed Darkness. That is not early. Opportunity is only good damage later. Null and Void is only good damage later. Maybe it's just good enough. 
Strike with blood is two energy for 14 damage. That's not even really sustainable either. Oh. Even getting both the Void's Kisses out super early in that previous fight just wasn't enough. Okay, we'll keep kneecaps until the turn that needs to be active. Let's also get past the Unleash Darkness for the Double Corruption pick up there. Okay, we'll kneecap you this turn. Block thoroughly. Even go for a double purge so we can try and maintain reasonable burning amounts. Because as the fight is definitely going to be quite slow, that burning amount is definitely going to become quite high. And then we're definitely going to become quite dead. So we need to find some way around that. Use our best management of it so far. Okay, we're uh, starting to get way too close for comfort again. <sighs> okay, at least I have kneecaps in this hand. We've got that going for us. 19. Yeah, let's throw those in, try and give itself the ability to reach for lethal later on. Five incoming, 28 that we need to block on this turn. Uh, Spirit Shield is a significant amount of that already by itself. Okay. I'm accepting one damage this turn and looking for lethal next turn. We've got Vulnerability directly atop the deck right now. Going in with some energy this turn okay never mind we have another turn of defense here I'm gonna pivot aggressive for the final cycle here though merchant merchant has to be the way we save ourselves here 30 23 yeah okay we can go Whew. Okay. Diversion. On discard, trigger void stone. It's also the black void stone that we really don't have an actual good target for at the moment. Come on, merchant, save our life. All alone's not bad. Pretty expensive, though. <laughs> Separated soul, the ability to use this to try and actually get to some sort of lethal early on matters a hell of a lot. I actually think I am just going to buy the upgraded version of... Ugh, but if I do that, the disheveled... No, no. Save myself right now because we're going to die if I don't. Okay, Sepsol goes in. Until my house, my rules is upgraded to the absolute least. I definitely can't put it in the deck. Okay. Let's pop that Void's Kiss into hand. Get 14 set up on the first turn. If at all possible, I would like not to make enemies vulnerable until the turn that I kill them. I think I need to remove that Soul Tithe from the deck. I think it's just a bit costly for us. 
Okay, so two of these dead on the same turn would be ideal. These are the two most likely to attack next turn. I'm probably not going to be able to double kill in a single turn next turn. Okay, double setup on you then. Can Separated Soul please not be at the top of all of my draws? Like, I really want to be able to hit it with the Sith. Just saying. I can kill two targets off the field right now. That's not a play, is it? No, because the frenzy of this would be out of control, so it would have to find a way to then kill another at the very end. Let's go spirit shields. I mean, separated soul probably does stay in hand, though. As a capable instant kill of a target on the board. Cycle past the power draw again. Virgin of the Cursed Shield. Six out of six energy for the next turn. We're not crippled either. Good. Okay. 21. 27, 21's lethal. Five energy. Okay, we got it. 21. 28. 21. Separated soul for the kill. Having a finisher is really, deeply, extremely important to us, and it's something we've been lacking the entire time. Let's get that my house. Uh... This this allows us to pivot for a finisher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm being too stubborn in not putting that in the deck. That that's my bad. Uh, I probably do want one cursed shield out for it though. I think I'm also still holding off on using the Black Void Stone until I find... Um, either a buff or a zero cost that's super powerful. That's that self-inflicted agony, isn't it? If there was ever a reason for me to build Death Strike into this deck, that'd be it. It's an elite as well. Oh, no vulnerability against this elite. Let's take that wound out of the deck. Uh, use this opportunity to put a... Diversion into the deck. Yes, I was setting myself up for use this opportunity to put an opportunity into the deck, but then I decided not to. We only have one attack out in the entire deck, and the power draw and the strength potion is the one that actually interacts with that. I'm gonna take that back out of the deck and put an opportunity in here instead. Um, hey, that's now an attack card, so it still interacts with the the strength potion. Draw one, discard one, lower soul type by two. I would need to hover around four. But if a build literally just generates its own death strike, that is so, so easy to manipulate. <laughs> strike with blood would give us the... No, no, that's only if we go way overboard. We're not going way overboard with the, uh, the current death strike setup. Well, actually, no, we could. Okay, specifically what it is, is what lies waiting, right? What lies waiting gets the Black Void Stone. It gives us a soul tithe anytime it draws an ability. The entire deck is abilities. That generates us enough soul tithes to start running the... the power that we're about to collect, self-inflicted agony. That said, we just need to go into the fight now. Fight Jaws. If you ended energy, sorry, if you end your turn with zero energy, gain an overcharge. Each bane or daze you suffer, delay block four. And every 10 cards, deal 10 damage to all enemies. I like dealing 10 damage to all enemies, but I don't play that many cards as this character outside of my house and my rules turns. I am pretty energy choked early on. I'll take a wizard hat, sure. Especially energy choked early on because of all of the stuff that I do that makes us very energy choked early on. Like, putting a bunch of cards in my opening hand that I intend on playing with discarded keys or some such like that. Um, I think I will hold on to my defense, both of these this turn though. Go past a Sepsol. 11, 7, so I already have the 18 block directly in hand. Um, and also it gave us an overcharge to do so because the wizard hat left us on zero energy. With the out purging those two targets out of the hand. Okay, incoming is 18 again next turn. I can keep a cursed shield, but I should probably purge. Uh, both. 
This is a fight where I definitely need to just build my corruption as quickly as possible. My house for my rules is not going to be relevant for the next cycle, at least. Gosh, can you take a turn off attacking, please? This is not the thing I asked. Okay. Null and Void's a great hit here. Getting the discard on Diversion for the full block this turn. And Unleash Darkness. Should I hold both of these for an extra overcharge next turn? Yeah. Quick Strike has 27 incoming damage. Fine. I'm going to weaken you for 18 incoming now. And I think that's the reason that I get to purge the spell shield here where I otherwise may not. Six out of six. Without the ability to set up vulnerability on the enemy, I worry that my house, my rules is like so damn far from the position it needs to be to actually deal enough damage to this enemy to, to save us from anything. Uh, so, yeah, that opportunity also, the fact that it's uh, a threshold condition for doing its initial damage is the reason that I can't use it at this point. I forgot that that was the case. So, a big old MB right there to... I really need to get like 35 before the My House, My Rules is playable here. I can do that next turn. No, I can't do that next turn. Maybe in three turns time though. Okay. Right? Oh, I feel like I learned this character and then I forgot this character again. Stop going to the top of the deck, please. 81 damage by itself right now. Okay, fine. So, here's an attempt. We'll purge the diversion, play my house, my rules. Now we are uh, drawing a card for each card played and we use corruption to play cards, but we can't gain corruption and everything costs plus one. So this will cost us two corruption to play, two corruption to play, three corruption to play, one. Um, so I'm going to just nuke and then try and end with Separated Soul, obviously, because Separated Soul is going to remove all the rest of our corruption. One, two. Okay, we'll cycle through with the Cursed Shield this time. Another Cursed Shield. Try and use Null and Void to get past Opportunity when I'm going to be able to play. Another Cursed Shield. You can see the decreasing damage of this every single time. The Separated Soul is becoming less powerful too. I, I pivoted way too early. Yep. I, I pivoted way too early and we're going to really, really, really feel the effects of this. <sighs> I, I needed to wait until we had like 45 or something like that. I was worried I was going to be waiting too long. Uh, and, and was gonna really pay the price as a result of that, but as it turns out, I needed to wait longer, lest I pay the price of that. Savvy. Yikes. And we have our cast out on the board, so we're effectively just fighting a half-health Bruce that's super buffed. Right, as though we'd just come into the fight for the first time and we're starting to engage with it here. Nah, this... <laughs> it, 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 this is just not going to work. 
well. I need to pivot, I guess, mad aggressive and try and end the fight faster. Yeah. Because I knew that we were going to end up in a turn like this that was just like, okay, and now you lose. GG. Oh. <sighs> that is really deeply unfortunate. There's a huge amount of planning there. You can see it was executed quite well in a decent amount of these fights, but any of the fights where the enemy was going to grow larger over the course of our fight and had a giant HP pool, I just couldn't deal with. I, I just had absolutely no way of dealing with. I had enough defense to get myself through a couple cycles, but by the time that I did that, the enemies just beat me the hell up. So what does that mean? It means I need larger single defensive cards. But the only ones you really have access to early on are like Spirit Shield. Oof. As much as I really desperately want to jump into another run immediately, uh, I know that successful runs, especially with that character, can be up to three hours long. And uh, uploading a three hour and 41 minute episode basically means I um, have stolen time that I needed to record other episodes today. So for the moment, my name is Moon Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Vault of the Void. We need to spend more time with the Daughter of the Void. I feel like I, I, I keep getting and then forgetting how to utilize her most effectively. But I also feel like there is... Uh, there, there is some concession that I'm not yet making on the first floor. Some, some target that I'm not yet reaching. And I thought that I was going to be solving that by upgrading our defensive cards there. Uh, it turns out, no. <laughs> that, that actually isn't the solution. They need to pivot much more aggressive earlier on, lest they not have the ability to shut down fights before their defense, upgraded as it may be, is overwhelmed. For the moment, though, hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. There's a playlist in the description down below with all my content on this game, past, present, and future. And hopefully we'll see you next time.